Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night chat tonight. Tonight, we're going to be digging into a, a lot of different topics. Simeon's with me tonight. Good evening, Simeon. Hey, how you doing? I am doing well, doing very, very well. Tonight, you're going to be kind of taking us down a few different roads that we haven't really touched on uh, in the past. And uh, one of those that we're going to start off with is talking about using texting and the DJ thing. Now, when, when I've seen some things like this before, and it's been really kind of focused on school dances, but you're more of a wedding DJ. Kind of tell us a little bit about your journey to, to that wedding spot. Okay. Well, uh, DJing for about 16 years, uh, started as a bedroom DJ, um, and then uh, started getting into bars and from bars, got into weddings. Um, been doing weddings for about five years now. Um, been doing some things to kind of change up the company, changed the name, uh, started charging more. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I, I noticed some trends and always thought about implementing the coolest new factor when it comes to technology, you right. know, what, what can make me stand out a little bit. And the, and the texting seemed to be the, the one thing that, uh, that really uh, stood out amongst the clientele around here. So nice. Nice. Yeah. So we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit about how you did it, what's involved with it and all the different aspects of it and such. But how do you, what, let's, let's start, before we get to the, the how it's done, how are mm. you using it in, in incorporating it in your show? Okay. So typically what I do is um, I'll place cards on all the tables um, that state, you know, text the DJ booth with the phone number um, that I use. And um, when I use it at a wedding, I, you, I announce it right after the speeches, right before dinner. When everybody, I pretty much have everybody's attention at that point. Sure. Um, the speeches are done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin. Buffet style, we got you know, we got it going. And just another, uh, you know, throw something out there. We do have a text to request line. Um, for the for the dancing later, uh, please check the card on the table. Uh, we do ask that it has to be wedding appropriate. I get a bunch of size, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it works out real well. I, I average about a hundred to one hundred and fifty texts per wedding, um, and, and you get a, a wide variety, which is uh, it's really nice to get to know your guests before they even hit the dance floor. So when you say getting to know the get by their musical tastes and do exactly. they communicate more than just that occasionally? Like, I don't know if obviously they're going to make music requests, but if they would have a shout out or anything, do they do that with it also? Yes, actually I've gotten shout outs for birthdays or anniversaries, nice. you know, or really, really they're, they're starting to give me ideas on what to do with it, which is really, really cool. Uh, another nice thing about it though is, um, they have my phone number now and they're and they're out in their phone they mm -hmm. texted me so you know a month two months from now someone says hey do you know a dj wait i texted one for his request line you know and i can use it for 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 marketing advertising you know it's 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 kind of cool to, to to really do that so now let's let's kind of dig into the how how you've got it all set up and such you mentioned of course the cards on the tables mm. you give them a number now do you have a separate number? Tell us a little bit about uh, the number that you're using for that text and how you handle that side of it. Well, the, the number I use is actually my business line. Um, it's a separate line from my, my personal line. I do keep it separate to, to try to, uh, you know, at least separate the company from, uh, from sure. personal. Mm -hmm. Um, I use a Google voice line. It's a voice over awesome. IP line. Um, well, more of a, uh, a call forwarding actually yep. uh, than anything, but it does text, it does picture texts and it does voicemails and calls and it comes all to your cell phone. So everything is just right there at your fingertips. Um, so it makes it very, very easy. I jumped in when, uh, when they first launched Google voice, I was one of the lucky ones to, to get an invite before anybody else. So I was able to actually get a phone number that had my name in it. Oh, nice. So, you know, it was, you know, two, seven, five slim. You know, which was really, really cool. So when my business name was DJ Slim's Mobile Entertainment, I, right I was there. really, I was good to go. Um, nowadays, it's going to be a lot harder because a lot of people do use the service, but it's free. Um, the only down, downside is, is if there's ever an issue with Google Voice, they really don't have a helpline. Oh. Yeah, that that's the only downside to it. They don't have like a number you call to say, hey, what's going on? Um, they just have like a quick fact guide um uh but i i've been using it since i launched my company like it was like seven eight years ago when i first got the first launched uh and uh i have not had one issue with them 
ever. <laughs> I've even transferred the phone number from one email to another when I changed the business email um, to keep them all together. And I had no issue, no interruptions. For someone who's not played with a Google Voice and set that up, is it something that's very difficult to do? No, not at all. It's 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 just as easy as setting up your your Gmail account. If you're setting up an email, you know, it's you just type in the the area that you're you're looking for. You know, if you're um, like me, it'd be a five eight six area code. I would just type in a five eight six, and it would generate all the numbers that are available. And you actually get to choose. Um, I, I don't know if you can anymore, but at the time you got to choose between five numbers that they give you, and you can refresh it and get another five numbers. Um, but yeah, it's just as simple as that. Hmm. So now on your phone itself, when, mm -hmm. if there is a Google voice ring, is that different than, than a regular, like, you know, your, your, uh, your fiance is calling. Are you going to, is it different? So you know that one's one and one's the other. So you answer, you know, you know, this is, a, you know, the DJ company. And then this is the, Hey, hello, how you doing type of thing for a friend's. There's two ways to actually set it up. Uh, one way is to have it come in just like any normal call would. So you would see the actual caller ID of the person calling, um, or you can set it up to let you know, hey, this is your business line calling. So I actually have the contact saved on my phone under Google Voice. So I know, okay, this is a work call. Uh, work call. I can either send it to voicemail or I can pick it up. Another cool thing about it is when you do pick up the call with Google Voice, it, it tells you, hey, and it'll announce the person's name. Press one to listen to the call, or press, or I'm sorry, press one to answer the call, or press two to go to voicemail. And you can actually listen to the voicemail live. Oh, nice! Without them actually hearing you, which is really cool. Um, it sends the voicemail via text as well, so you get a transcribed voicemail um, via text, so it goes right to your email. Um, and you can also set certain hours which is really cool. You can actually program it. So between this time and this time during the day, you're going to receive calls on any time after that, it goes straight to voicemail. Hmm. I, I, so, haven't, I haven't played with it myself too terribly much. Uh, Cause we, we utilize it a little bit with one of the businesses, but that's, that's really neat. So now when a text message comes across for a request, are those in any different, do they look different or how does that work? Uh, well, you would download the, the Google Voice app, and okay. what it does is it does sep it's a completely separate app that organizes all the calls, uh, voicemails, and text messages. Okay. Um, that way, you, it, it is separate. When it alerts on your phone, um, it is a separate alert from your actual calls. Hmm. Nice. And everything's there, organized, and they can send the things. As you were talking about them sending you messages, and you know that they they're num they have your number because they have texted you. Is there a way within the Google system to send a auto reply basically when they send you a text message and say, hey, this is, uh, you know, DJ John Young. Thanks for uh, sending me a text message. Or is that- I have not found that functionality oh, yet. Dude. I've actually been waiting for something like that. That would be so uh, cool. Maybe, there, maybe it's against laws or something. I don't know, but yeah, how cool would that be? That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, actually. I've been wanting that. <laughs> so so let's talk about the demographic of the people who utilize this system. What have you been noticing with that? Um, from the guest standpoint? From the guest standpoint, I would say the the older generation, I would say any 50 and up to have a harder time with it. But anybody under the age of 50 seems this seem to be taking well to it. Um especially the younger generation the only one of the issues i do have with it with especially with the younger uh the younger generations um anyone under the age of 30 um they if you don't play their song they get really aggressive <laughs> <laughs> um i've had people you know cuss me out you know i've had you know and, and it happens you know you can't make everybody happy and because it's a text and not a face to face, it kind of has that anonymity. You know, a you're bit. a little bit anonymous. But uh, I mean, but but it, you could. I mean, in theory, you stand you sh the music is shut off and you're on a microphone. Wait a second, click. You could call that number and whoever's ringing okay. now. You, you, I mean, you would know that, dude. You just sent me this. Does your mother <laughs> know you speak with that? You, you kiss your mom with that mouth? That kind of a thing. <laughs> And I've, I have, I, I am the type, I do like to have fun with the crowd and they, and they, they really do feed off of it. And I have called people out for some really ridiculous requests or, <laughs> or, or doing something very similar to that. Uh -huh. Um, and then the brides love it. You know, it's, it's really cool. Uh, I have a sell for my business. Uh, 
Uh, Reggie's mentioning, of course, and that's why I was asking you earlier about the number of how you were handling that, because why didn't you just use your cell phone number? What was your reasoning behind going with the Google Voice instead of using your personal cell phone number? Using a personal cell phone number, you put the risk of getting texts every day from, you know, you just, everybody has your number. I, I want to keep my personal life, my personal life, my business life, my business life. If I still have people from a gig two years ago that text me randomly requests. And I know it's them because I still have the history, right. uh, you know, or they're saying, Hey, DJ Slims, how you doing? You know, like we're at this party and you're not here. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's good to have that separation. Yeah, I would, um, I would agree. You don't want to just be constantly looking at your phone, you know, your personal phone, you know, it's, 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 it's personal <laughs> for a reason. So, so when you shut the, the Google app off, does that basically then your phone is in essence quiet? So it's not bouncing notifications up and such. Well, you do get email notifications. You can so the, that has a lot of, uh, options when it comes to notifications, you okay. can have an email text forward. Like there's just so many options. So you can have it mute the call. So you won't receive any calls, but you'll get an alert. Hey, you just got a missed call um, and they left this voicemail. So you'll be able to at least check it without having to worry about you're getting a phone call and you have to go see if it's work or if it's a personal. Sure. So sure. Nice. Very nice. Have you run into any situations where you've had clients that have been like, yeah, no, I don't want that at my wedding? I've had maybe one or two. Okay. And, and I, then I just don't even put out the cards. You know, I just, I keep the cards by me and, and we call it a day. Um, I, the way I do it is my business card has, you know, all my information on the front. You flip it around, text the DJ booth in the back. And I just use those. So if anybody wants my card, they it's can just right snag there. that. Too. Yeah, for sure. When you, when you are talking to uh, potential clients and you're doing prospect or the sales calls and such, and you bring this up, what mm -hmm. is the, typically what's the response from prospective clients? I get a, oh, wow, that's that's kind of cool. I've never heard of that before. Um, but uh, I've been getting a lot of like referrals from weddings that I've been doing. So a lot of them know this is what I do mm -hmm. and they really like that because they, they understand that the wedding is, it, I mean, it may be about them, but it, it's about their guests having fun too. So it, it kind of helps out in that, uh, in that manner as well. Nice, nice. How many, how about you, as far as you're playing the music at the, for the dance and the reception, everything's going along. How much are you using these requests? I mean, if you're getting a hundred requests, obviously you're not able to play all of them. Yeah. Are you playing 10%? Yeah. What are you thinking? I would say about 10 to 15%. Okay. Yeah, obviously there's going to be a lot of requests of songs that you always play at the weddings. Uh, you know, so you're going to get a lot of those, but then you have the ones where I, I would say about half of my songs I get are slow dances. Okay. Then that makes <laughs> We're sense. Obviously yeah. not going to be playing those all night. Um, so I, I pick and choose which one would be appropriate. A lot of them are like, oh, this, but this was mine and my boyfriend's song. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably everybody else's song too. But uh, we, we, try, we try to work around as best we can and filter out the ones that are appropriate, inappropriate. Um, if, if someone likes a certain song by an artist that I, I know that I can't play because of you know the lyrics, I try to find something similar by that same artist that could possibly you know, we can squeak by with. Sure. So it really does help to know, okay, you know, if, if, if they like Drake, I'm getting a lot of Drake. Okay. Let's see what I can play in, in that, in that field for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of seventies requests. I know mm -hmm. to stay in that genre a little longer than I normally would, you know? Sure. So it, it helps out a lot. Yeah. Very nice. Very, uh, it's a great idea. I, I like that. Uh, I like that a lot. That's a neat, neat thing. Um, they send the requests in, you get, you get the text message on your phone. Are you transferring that to paper so you have a list? Are you transferring it to like a playlist on your, your software? Or how are you handling that side of it? Typically uh, during dinner, right after I, I scarf down my dinner, I'll, <laughs> I'll grab my phone and I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm just sliding them into a playlist, getting them ready to go and seeing, you know, which one's going to fit where and, and just kind of adjusting there. I, I usually have about 20 minutes to a half hour mm -hmm. after I finish eating. To, to really work with the playlist and, and get things going with that. So nice, nice. You mentioned, of course, a little earlier that uh, that, you, that you've been doing weddings and such for a while. And you were you mentioned before we went on camera that you have kind of changed and rebranded your company. Uh, let's let's kind of dig into that a little bit because there's quite a few people who are doing something similar to that at a point in time. Because when we're 19 and we name our DJ company, 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. So, kind of talk us from where you where you were and where you where you are today. I'll um, I, I started as a DJ Slims. Um, I'm still DJ Slims. I'm not as slim as I used to be, but I, <laughs> um, that's that was my 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 DJ handle, and um, I started with uh, DJ uh, Slims Mobile Entertainment as the name of the company okay. when I started go doing private events. Uh, mobile events, uh, weddings, and, and and whatnot, and I noticed that I uh, people were requesting me, and they weren't seeing me as a company, but me as a person. Oh, and I wanted to separate it a little bit, and I, I noticed that uh, well, actually watching your videos, um, uh, I was you know just, I rebranded. Uh, it'll be a year next month. I rebranded, mm -hmm. and um, and I changed my pricing earlier this year. And I noticed a dip <laughs> yeah. in, in a little bit, but it did start to separate me. I, when I, when I was getting inquiries, they were asking for my company versus, you know, what, you know, what do you charge or what they'd say, what does your company charge or, you know, uh, who, who do you have on staff and, and uh, which is it, what I started wanted to do. And I wanted to look for other DJs that had the same passion I do. Unfortunately, it's really hard nowadays uh, once you build your company to to find someone of you know the same mindset, um, and so I'm I'm right now I'm in that transition and I'm I'm starting to see <laughs> the the struggle of of changing it. Mm -hmm. So how have you how have you handled now? There's been venues, of course, that have seen you and recommended you, and mm -hmm. now that you've changed kind of your you're changing your brand. Have they been quick to pick that up, or are they still? referring to the the old uh, the old name and such more well the nice thing is i was able to, i still have my old name um the the website the uh and everything still in my new branding so right now it's bpm mobile entertainment formerly dj slims so if someone looks up dj slims mobile entertainment like they send it up on google or dj slims they'll it'll revert back to my new company. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I decided to kind of just work that for a while, maybe a year or two and keep that DJ Slims under there for a little bit and, and transition it to fully BPM mobile entertainment and, and start to really branch out um, as far as hiring more people. I mean, I do photo booths as well. Um, I just started back up in, in uh, game shows uh, so I really want to kind of make it a, a, a nice entertainment company versus mm -hmm. just DJ Slims. Yeah, yeah. DJ Slims, it would sound like, you know, if you were going to be doing the club world and mm -hmm. in the wedding the wedding area and, and such, that may not be the most, uh, they'd be like, yeah, no, not so much. We're the entertainment with the different options. You mentioned game shows. You're getting into yeah. to that. What... Uh, I want to kind of go through what you're what you're looking to offer with that, and uh, what made you go to game shows. Um, well, I started the game shows in the bars. Actually, uh -huh. um, it, it was a it's a Family Feud style and Jeopardy style. Okay. Um, it, I had buzzers that I would give tables, um, and they would team up, and um, I would either have a projector that would project the questions or the, the game board. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like Jeopardy, you would have your categories, your amounts, and and just go through each team, and uh, they get to choose a category and amount and buzz in if they have the answer. Um, I started doing those at bars. And I, I was uh, a resident for a while at a, at a couple bars doing that. And once I stopped doing bars, I kind of shoved that underneath, and uh, you know, it's just collecting dust. And... I started getting requests when I started, you know, I started talking about, I used to do game shows. We'll yeah. do still do game shows. And I've been doing them at like birthday parties. Like I did a nice. 90th birthday party and they, they wanted family feud. They loved family feud. Nice. Um, nice. I did, <laughs> I did a, um, it wasn't a funeral. It's, it's called a celebration of life. Yeah. I actually DJed one of those, uh, for the first time this year. And they also wanted family feud. And I, I, I know we played family feud because that was the, uh, the person that passed away that was one of their favorite shows and so i was like okay you know i'm starting to see this coming back a little bit so i was like you know what this is great for 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 church events for for school events you know it, it, uh, bridal showers uh you know, baby shower you can literally have this thing you know anywhere um and it's minimal setup for me you know all i need is my computer projector and a sound uh you know my maui 5 go and i'm good to go 
And it, you know, it's like, you know what, let's, let's bring that back because it seems to be picking up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I booked it a few times this year. Very nice. Good job. Yeah. That, I used to do a lot of that, uh, through the early 2000s and then it's just like er, screeching halt for so maybe yeah. there's a a uh, uh for those wondering and i, I should have asked this earlier uh where's your where, where's home base for you where's your market where are you where are you performing uh, metro detroit um sterling heights area so i'm in michigan um and uh yeah <laughs> yeah nice uh, just to put it in a, a perspective or a point of reference for folks uh we got a question from facebook ron had here um yeah. getting back to the texting uh you you mentioned, of course, that they will have your number, but do you keep all of the numbers of the people who have texted you, or is it one of those things that just get dumped and you continue on? I've been dumping them just because I don't like clutter, and I haven't really used them yet for for um, for marketing purposes. I haven't really uh, knuckled down to see what I can do. Uh, you know, there's certain legalities yeah. I got to also uh, worry about when it comes to uh, advertising. So I, I haven't really looked into it, but I know it can be done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's some. Uh, there's got to be a disclaimer. I gotta, you know, insert yeah. the, like like with the auto text. Hey, do you want to subscribe <laughs> to this? And it, it, so I, I got to be careful on on what I do, but I it can be done. Yeah, and and I think as as you right now right now there's enough novelty, and you'll have those people who will remember. Yeah, I did. I sent a I sent a guy, and and they'll look, and they'll be able to find that. Oh yeah, there's the song. Every, yeah, so even though you're not marketing to it, it's still as you as you mentioned, it's a like a a, a method of contact, i.e., a business card that's sitting in their pocket on their phone. Digital business card. Yep. Yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. So so the branding, uh, you you kind of went through and kind of redid that part of your company. Mm -hmm. How did, as far as the, the different, did you change marketing mater materials and everything with that? Or is it, are mainly your marketing things now digital? So it, was, it wasn't a big change over that way. Oh, it was a huge change. Um, not only did I change the name, but I completely revamped the website. I, I, uh, I, I com it was a completely different platform. Um, it, uh, it took a lot of work and, it, it, I, I look like a completely different company. I, I guess you could say, which is a good thing. Is what I'm. It's what I'm looking for. Right. But in, in in another sense, it's not something the people that have used me know. So you know, if they're going to look. Well, this doesn't look like him anymore. You know, or this doesn't look like the company. But it says DJ Slim. So it's 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 a little scary because I I have seen that I'm for next year. I know we're hitting that wedding season, uh, the the uh, the engagement season coming up. So I'm yeah. hoping uh, I'm gonna start getting more inquiries. But I mean, I advertise um, the Knot, Wedding Wire, um, Gig Masters, um, and, and Facebook. I pay for I I pay for some uh, Facebook advertising as well. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm really trying to just get my name out there as much as possible. That way, people see that this hey, this is DJ Slims. We're, we're still here, just a different name, and it, I just I haven't been getting the bites I used to. Yeah. So it is a little scary, and you know my fiance is telling me just let it let it let it sit, uh, sit for yeah, a little bit. It's it going to take a while. It took you a while to build your business already. This may take a you know not as long, but it'll still take a while for for that to to really kick in. So you know fingers crossed on that one, but. I've been trying to market uh, towards uh, venues as well. The venues that were recommending me, I did approach them and give them new business cards, new material to hand out to their their customers. Uh, make sure that you know we're all on the same page and that I'm still here for them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's an important part is to make sure you've got the up to date information in their hands so that they can be talking intelligently about you instead of the oh yeah, do hire this guy and then the bride comes back and says, you know, he's changed his company completely since you told me. Oh. <laughs> That would be a bad. You don't want them to look silly. You mentioned um, you changed price structures. Let's kind of mm. go through a little bit on, you know, we don't have to mention numbers specifically, but what what was the impetus behind the change in your price structure? And then kind of what, what kind of uh, resistance have you been feeling from the people who are calling you? Well, when I first uh, when I first started, I charge appropriately. Uh, you know, my equipment wasn't as as fancy as everybody else's, and I and I knew that. Um, but as I started to grow, um, my you know equipment got better and better, and I just started raising my prices. But then I stopped, and that was my biggest. Uh, that that that's what hurt me the most uh, sure. for for about I would say four years. I stuck at the same pricing structure where I shouldn't have been to begin with. 
um, when it came to a DJ photo booth package. Mm-hmm. And I was, like I uh, told you before, I was booking 50 to 60, uh, you know, weddings, um, during wedding season. And that's, that's quite a bit from, you know, April till September, October, no, even November. And for, for a single op that that's a that's lot of work. Crazy amount. Yeah, that is a lot. It, it, it's a lot of work and it was just happening year after year after year. And I was starting to feel a little burnt out and, I, was, I just didn't feel like I was being well compensated and uh, watching one of your videos again, um, giving me a, you know, a structure of, okay, your time is valuable. You also got to charge according to how, you know, your, your, uh, your gear, um, and, and, uh, and travel and, and just all, you know, you got to take all those into factor. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, I didn't know. You know, this is, was all new to me. Yeah. And when I sat down and, and, and ran the numbers, I was like, whoa, I, you know, I shouldn't be charging this. I need to be, I need to be up here, mm-hmm. not down here. And the, the only blowback as the blowback I've been getting so far is from referrals from, I, w- I would call them budget brides um, because that's what I was. I was a budget DJ, a right. DJ. and uh, from those referrals, well, you charge $300 less uh, for this person or Five hundred dollars less for that person. What what's changed? You know, in the past year and a half, and and trying to explain. Well, my speakers are now you know worth you know twice the amount that I paid for them before, and and it's 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 been difficult because some really don't understand the back you know the the backgrounds of a business. So, you yeah. know, the insurance you have to pay, the 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 wear and tear on your equipment, the the, uh, the wear and tear on your car. The wear and tear on your back, you know, yeah, they, for sure. <laughs> they, they, they just, it's hard for them to grasp. They think, well, can you give me that same deal? You know, we'll just let it slide this one time. <laughs> it, it's like, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I can go with a certain, like, I just literally just yesterday, um, I got a referral from a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave her my, my price. She's like, okay, I'm going to talk to my mom. She talked to her mom. My mom said I can get a DJ for 250 bucks and a, and a photo booth for 300. And I and, I, and she's like, if you can't get it that close, I understand. I'm like, listen, this is my price. I can get it to this price, you know, this low. And even doing it this low, I'm literally not making anything after insurance and uh, my equipment value. I told her I'm bringing twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment to your event. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a little, you know, it's a little hard for me to do that. And I told her I'm like, I completely understand. If you need to, if if you feel that you need to go with this other DJ. I would not, you know, I'm not going to hold it against you, but this is my lowest. And, you know, if it's something you can do, it's, you know, great. If not, you know, I'm, I do apologize. Yeah. But, you know, that was the first time I actually ran into that situation. Usually it's just like, I, I, that's, you know, $300 more, you know, but this one was quite a bit less <laughs> than yeah. what I would normally charge. Oh, for sure. That's, that's to a point where the whole, and it, there's a side of us when people say things like that, because they, I hear that often myself, and it's like you want to go into the, you know, that doesn't even cover rental, that doesn't even cover this, that doesn't even cover that, and it gets to be the point that I've turned it around now when people are like, hey, I've got you know this other DJ that can do it for this, and you know it's a quarter whatever of what I'm charging, and it's like, and it's like, I'm, and I'm sure they'll do the best that they can do for you, but mm-hmm. that's not the John Young wedding experience, and. The John Young wedding experience brings so much more to your day than most average DJs. Mm-hmm. And I get that there's, you know, there, there's costs and such, and, and, and there's, you're going to have a budget, and I, will re, I respect your budget. But don't expect you know, someone to do something like what the, you know, the John Young wedding experience. And I'm using my name in there, but you, you fill in your name. Because it, it becomes one of those things where people, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm getting more than, because they, they don't care. And I've, I've done that, you know, the frustration side, it's like, geez, I can, I can list 25 reasons why, you know, my, I have to pay this, I've got to buy my music and I'm going to, you know, the, these lights don't, that are in my house, so they're not free, you know, everything. But when it's like uh, talking about turning it around and talking about that, you know, the DJ Slim's experience that people at weddings absolutely love, that's what mm-hmm. I can bring for you. And it's going to cost a little bit more because it's different than what other people bring because it's the DJ Slim's experience. No, oh, for sure. And they'll be like, oh, that's pretty cool. I guess that. And some people, it just doesn't matter because it's, you know, it's all about that $250. And I, I get that. Those folks uh, probably would have not been a, 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 a decent fit for some of the things that I would want to be able to offer them. So, 
No, for sure. And I mean, and I'm also trying not to turn away gigs, you know, like turn down, yeah. you know, that, that's a, you know, a day that I'm not going to make that $250 or, or whatnot. But at the same time, like, do I really want to put myself down there? And then, you know, she goes to her friend, Hey, he did it for me for 250 bucks, you yeah. know? <laughs> and, and there are times, you know, and we've talked about this in other videos where there's times where that $250 payday on a Sunday or at a, you know, I'm a week out and I need someone to, there's times where, you know, the, Hey, that's, that's the alternative is I'm not making any money at all that night. So at least it's, it's something. So there's, it's not a, uh, one of those things that I would say, you never take those types of, yeah, of but, course. Yeah. It's just, uh, the struggle is, is, I mean, it's re the struggle is real and that mm -hmm. uh, here we're, we're trying to provide for our family and provide for uh, running a business that's going to be able to continue to, to evolve and grow. And, uh, and that takes, that takes money. Yeah, that and, does, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, they don't know what uh, we do to bring a, to a good a show. Yeah, Chris, Chris, I, I just made the statement. They don't know what we do to bring to, to bring a good show. I think that's, that's a, that's a, a tough one because they've seen so many DJs and most of the time they've seen a, 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 an average DJ or maybe a poor DJ that they maybe were intoxicated enough to think that he was a great DJ because they had enough, <laughs> enough alcohol. So well, they, don't, they don't really see the, I, I'm not, I'm the type of DJ that doesn't just sit behind the, the turntables, uh, like during cocktail hour and during dinner, I'm making sure everything's running on time. If bride needs a bustle. The the wedding party is too drunk to do it. I've bustled dozens of brides. Yeah, uh, you know they they're all taking pictures in the in the the golf course. I'm bringing them hors d'oeuvres. Uh, you know, like I I want them to see my face as much as possible to see that I'm there for them. You know, no matter what happens that night, I'm going to do my best to make their night as memorable as possible. And that's the same thing when I'm working with the photographers, the videographers, the caterers. I'm making sure that hey. We're running on, you know, if we're running behind, I'm communicating with them. You know, I'm letting everybody know what's going on. So it's, it's, it, I, I'm almost like a wedding coordinator mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to like a day of coordinator when it comes to my services. So I, you know, go above and beyond um, the call of duty when it comes to a DJ, which helps set me, you know, apart from all the other ones. But the guests don't see that. Yeah. They so. see, they see the results of it, which is a, a uh, wedding party that is a little, more fresh and, and, and a bride and groom who are not as stressed out mm -hmm. and they see the smooth flow of the day. Now, for those of you watching this video, you're just hearing what the DJ Slim's experience is all about. When he's talking, when he talks to that bride and says, you know, this is what the DJ Slim's experience, he just explained it for you. Now take it, take this concept, put your name and your things you do into it. And this is, here's your sales pitch. You know, here's your, oh, sure. you, I mean, it's really, you, you've done a, you're doing a great job of, of laying this out here for, uh, for folks. Uh, I mean, uh, I even carry like uh, sewing kits, um, tide sticks, you know, I've had brides pop right out of their, their dress, you know, yeah. they grab the sewing kit. They're good to go. You know, at a bride at a, we had an outdoor wedding it was a barbecue style on a baseball diamond. They even had a three inning baseball, uh, you know, like game yep. between, bridesmaids and her uh and her parents and the groom and his parents and the groomsmen and i played up the, played the walk-up music and and gave the the little titles and it was a great time but during dinner the bride spilled mustard all over her dress oh no she just I, it was right in front of me too i saw her do it she was, she shook the bottle went, went to put it on the hot dog and just went all over her and oh. she just looks at me and i'm like you just wait right there i ran to the car Grabbed my tie sticks. She went through two of them, got most of it out. But I was lucky. She was the type of bride that grabbed the microphone and addressed the elephant in the room and made it fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she knew she was outdoors. Something bad was going to happen. So she was. She at least took it well. <laughs> See, and those are the those. That story is is gold when it comes to talking about what you can bring. I'm going to you know bring this peace of mind. I'm looking out for things for you, and that's. And that would be a, a story I would tell that one until and, and <laughs> the end of, because your preparation, your your thoughtfulness, really took and made made it so that her pictures for the rest of the day may have a yellow hue, but it's not going to be the yellow that everyone's going to be like, 
what did you do? You know, there will be those pictures of that, but the rest of the day, it can focus on her happy, smiling face and his happy, smiling face instead of the yellow streak down the front of her. (laughs) Unless, of course, that's a Miss America swag. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Good, good stuff. So, so um, you've been you've added things to your company as you've expanded and rebranded your name. What kind of things are you looking into 2019? Are there more things you're going to be adding to the company, or what's really going to be your focus yes. for 2019? I'm trying to go into uh, to some more of the battery operated systems, mm-hmm. um, the uplights. That's uh, my next uh, thing on my list is to get the battery powered uplights. Uh, fortunately, I have a wedding to pay for now myself, so. Kind of put that on the back burner because yep. those things can can cost a pretty penny. But uh, I'm I'm looking to build the first fully powered. I'm talking lights and and DJ. Uh, you know the 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 mixer, laptop, uh, speakers, everything battery powered mm-hmm. without a generator. So uh, I'm 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 really close to getting it done. Um, the only problem I'm having right now is the, the mixer. Um, they, they already make battery powered lights, so I'm good with that. Yep. Um, I got my, my Maui five go, so I'm good with that. Um, and the batteries on the laptop, I'm good with that. It's just the mixer right now. Um, I run a, uh, DDJ SX three right now mm-hmm. and uh, that, that pulls a lot of power. So I'm trying to find something that'll last at least eight hours, not at least six hours. Cause you never know what can happen. Um, but I'm, I'm really close to, to, to building something like that without having to use a gas generator. Sure. Um, and not spending a lot of money either. Um, so I'm trying to build something like that. That way I can have something where I'm in the middle of a park. I can literally go anywhere and, and, and throw a party, you know, and get people to, to, to see me. I can go to the beach, you know, and just plug and play and I'm good to go. Um, so really trying to find little ways to get myself to stand out. I found a uh, battery powered microphone on on Amazon for thirty dollars. Uh-huh. Wireless microphone works phenomenally um, on on the Maui Five Go, and so I have something perfect for for ceremonies. Sure. Um, sure. I've been using it now for about five months with no issues. Batteries last about three ceremonies. I don't have to replace them, which is really really decent. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are my plans for 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 the twenty nineteen. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, there, I've, there's a few folks who have been working on that that fully battery powered system, and mm-hmm. and that's uh, that's kind of interesting that that's an, you, uh, you're another that are, are looking for that and such. And as we talk to uh, gear uh, manufacturers, mm-hmm. and Brian has mentioned this, you know, when he's talking about the Maui Five Go, how he's the reason why I bought the Maui Five Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's a great little portable system and such. And there's. Uh, yeah, the the idea with that that controller, you get that done, and you've got then you four to six hours of of runtime for sure. So, mm-hmm. well, Simeon, I think we're going to wrap up here. Uh, I've got to get uh, things ready for our next show tonight. Um, if people would like to uh, kind of reach out and chat a little bit, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Um, uh, Facebook. Um, they can email me um, at uh, BPM Mobile Entertainment. So BPM M Entertainment at uh, Gmail dot com um, and or they can go to my website and send me a quick message from there as well. Um, it's bpm-me.com. Okay. That sounds great. And you guys can go out and, and connect and see me. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Some great stuff. We'll have to uh, see if you got some time this uh, spring to jump in and we can talk uh, talk a little bit more about how things are progressing. Oh, well, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. We'll be back in Thanks, about uh, about 20 minutes here with our second show tonight. Again, you can go out to youtube.com slash news at about... 9 o'clock Eastern, and you'll be able to catch the show. Thanks so much.